Over the years that John and I knew one another, our relationship evolved from the slightly odd and respectful attitude of a novice toward a grizzled veteran to the more collegial point of view common among equals. All right, truth of the matter is that John was merely permitting me to harbor the illusion that we were still equals. It's difficult to conceal your contempt for the world when you're young, tall, handsome, and talented, but enough about me, let's talk about John. John went into the field with producer James Blue to compile material for our most recent program, Breaking Point, which dealt with California's overcrowded prison system. John, John. He was working John. as an associate producer, but there was always a correspondent inside John yearning to break out. Start over on that because he had this natural talent for establishing rapport with everyone. In this case, prisoners and correctional officers. What John didn't like was the endless drudgery of putting a program together in the edit room. So he came to Tom and me and told us that he wanted to leave Discovery and spend six months or more living in the Middle East, probably Syria. As you can see from John's pictures, he made the trip, but only on a two-week vacation. Before he left, he had offered a suggestion at one of our story conferences. How about a series of programs on the same subject? Something really big. How about several hours on China? It was a brilliant idea, exactly the sort of work we should be doing, and we adopted it which is how John came to stay with the Koppel Group and how he came to take up residence in Chongqing rather than Damascus. <laughs> this is all the video we have of John in China with a couple of young greeters at a Ford dealership in Chongqing. The handsome man, look at that. Woo! By this time, John already had a Chinese name, Gao Shang. Tall Mountain, they called him. This Catholic church was built by the French a hundred years ago. Two days after John died, our people went to a morning mass. They'd asked the priest to dedicate it to John. They'd only told a few people what they were doing, so they were astonished to discover about 20 of John's Chinese friends, people he'd come to know over the less than three months he'd lived in Chongqing. After mass, Tom invited everyone back to the Hilton and they all started talking about their lost friend, John Alexander. We went to dinner together last Friday night. Suddenly, John said, Alan, I feel I'm a goddamn talented person. Yeah. I said, yes, that's the way I'm thinking about myself. <laughs> I, I told him I, I, I'm a Chinese teacher. I teach foreigners Chinese. And he said, well, why not teach me some? I said, OK. We have four tones. When we speak, we have, we're going to change different tones. And you know, even the same pronunciation with different tones it means different things. So, so, e, r, san, si, wu. And John, when John learned this, you know, it, it's like dancing. He said, e, r, san, si, wu. I said, OK, you can do that way. I said, oh, oh, just wait. I got to remember it this way. Um, but, you know, I know people will love it, love at me, but it's OK. I'm going to say it just like this, you know. OK. And so how was this after three months? How was this change? <coughs> OK, he forgot, ev he forgot everything. <laughs> I told John, oh, this is my best friend in university. Uh, her name is Fei Fei. And John didn't he hesitate 
and waved his big hand to my friend and said, Hi, Fei Fei, Ni hao, Fei Fei. And my friend just shocked and ran away. And John looked at me, what's wrong? I said, nothing. Maybe you are just too handsome. The pictures you're seeing are John's. The music you're hearing is John's. Maureen and I were talking about her son the other day. I mentioned that John reminded me of an intellectual hummingbird flying around at incredible speed sampling a little bit of this nectar and then a little bit of that. John was insatiably curious, simultaneously tolerant and impatient, a young man who welcomed every new friendship and embraced every possible experience to the fullest. Almost as though he knew that his time among us would be much too short.